Coffee and walnut cake is a true British staple during tea time, actually any time, but it's very easy to make and I'm going to show you how to do this. As usual, ingredients in the description below and please don't forget to subscribe. Let's start by brewing a strong cup of coffee. You can use instant coffee for this. I suggest two tablespoons, but four if you want a strong coffee flavor. Use 100 ml of boiling water to make your coffee. It will be just enough for the cake, the icing, as well as the soaking syrup. I'm using a stand mixer here, but you can definitely do this with a hand mixer. It will just take a few minutes longer. In a bowl, separate your egg yolks from your whites and add the egg yolks only to the stand mixer bowl or whichever bowl you're going to use to make the cake. To that, add fine caster sugar. You want to use the golden kind ideally as this gives a nice hue to your cake, but any caster or fine sugar will do otherwise. And continue to mix that for a few minutes, ideally five, until you get a nice thick paste like this. To that, add room temperature butter to your cake mix. Make sure it's room temperature as this makes a batter that is more likely to be lump free and smooth. Now you're going to let that mix for ideally five minutes, a few minutes longer if you're using a hand mixer until your batter becomes very thick. When you remove your whisk and pull away from the batter, it should be very stiff, just like this. This is to ensure that we add as much air as possible to the batter to have a very spongy cake. Now sift in all your flour into your batter and fold using a spatula or a wooden spoon. Make sure to fold in the flour and not overmix. This is to prevent a stiff cake. Now whisk your egg whites until they become very thick to the point where you invert the bowl, it doesn't fall out. Of course, this wouldn't be a coffee and walnut cake without walnut. So grab a handful and put them into a bowl, smash them together until you get fine pieces and add them to your batter. Then fold them. Again, making sure not to overwork the batter. Add a third of your egg whites into your batter to loosen it and make it easier to mix. Add in your second third and again, carefully fold in until you no longer see the egg whites. And you're gonna follow the exact same step with the final third of your egg whites. You might want to add all your egg whites in one go and fold that into your batter, but you will find that it is quite tough to mix. Adding a small portion at first makes all of that folding easier. I like my cake layers to be quite thick and have less icing. For that, I'm going to use six inch tins, but if you would prefer to have a more even ratio from cake to icing, use eight inch tins. Of course, your cake won't be as tall. Nonetheless, using a scale to weigh your batter across both tins helps to get an even layer. Use a spatula to spread out the batter evenly. Add whole walnuts on top of one of the layers. This is entirely optional, and if you're going to ice the entire cake anyway, you can skip this. But if not, sprinkle some light brown sugar on top of it and you'll get some caramelized walnuts. As you can see, that's exactly what I did here and the result was amazing. Now bake in a preheated oven for 30 to 35 minutes and you know when it's done, if a skewer or toothpick comes out clean, you can even off the top layer of the naked cake. So when you stack it, the cake will look very straight. Add two to four tablespoons of the coffee you brewed earlier to this layer. Let's make the icing while the cake is cooling. To a bowl, add your double cream and whisk until you get soft peaks. You don't want to have very stiff ones, so you want to make sure to stop as soon as you get to this point. To a separate bowl, add your mascarpone as well as your powdered or icing sugar. You can fold in your sugar, you don't need to use a whisk as it will dissolve quite easily and also prevent the sugar from flying everywhere. Now add in two to four teaspoons of coffee, depending on your preference. At this point, you can use a whisk to make sure that the coffee incorporates well. Of course, you can adjust the level of coffee as you're mixing to your taste. Once you have incorporated your mascarpone with your coffee, add the mixture to your double cream and fold in until well combined. If your cream is a bit runny, feel free to whisk it very quickly up until you get a thickness like this. I really want my coffee to incorporate and soak into the sponges really well. So I am icing the cake a day after. As you can tell, the coffee has really gone into this layer. Top it off with an even layer of cream and spread across well. After this, it's entirely your choice how you want to ice your cake. I'm going for semi-naked style here. So adding a bit of cream here and there and cleaning it off with an offset spatula. 
This is ideal if you're going for the artisan look, but you also have some cream left over you can serve on the side of each slice of cake. Now let's slice into the cake to show you what the inside looks like. As you can tell, it's a very tall cake, for a six inch anyway, but you have a nice amount of icing, not too much, and I am choosing to pipe some icing on the side of the cake to use as a uh, dipping sauce, if you will. Of course, you can always spoon some of that cream right next to the cake or on top of it, but piping it while it looks pretentious also looks pretty good. And thank you for watching. This was my recipe for homemade coffee and walnut cake.